What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of Draft 2 Glory. In the last episode guys, I think we won the draft, I can't remember. I can't remember what draft we had. Oh no, we lost in the first round after getting the uh, Optimus Prime Del Piero. Um, none of these formations really interest me at all. We'll go with the 4 3 2 one. That's the that we had... Did I have the 4-3-2-1 recently and I got to the semi-final, I think? Um, anyway, if you guys are enjoying Draft of Glory and you want to drop a thumbs up, that would be very much appreciated. And if EA wouldn't mind giving me a good goddamn captain every once in a while, that would be very much appreciated as well. However, I'm never taking Jonas or Jekko or Royce. And if I take Mertens, that eliminates the opportunity, or at least one opportunity of me getting Team of the Year, Ronaldo, Messi or Optimus Prime Henri. So I'm going to take Jan Vertonghen... Um, and have him as a good, good base in defence. Uh, and hopefully that pays dividends from the striker that I get afterwards, which it kind of has because we've got some way better choices. Mo Salah is a really good option, but I think five-star weak foot Hyung Min Son is going to be the one for me. And then our left wing is going to be tragic. And th this, this seems to be a big theme for me. It seems to be a really big theme where... Let me take the uh, sniper chem style there. Uh, it seems to be a big, th big theme for me. Give me George Best. Come on, give me Prime Optimus Prime George Best. Yes, we got him. Let's go. This looks to be one of the best cards in the whole game, man. His 93 was already remarkable. 89 stam, good jumping and heading. Not that that's super relevant because of a man of his height at 5'9". Four star, four star, immaculate dribbling, shooting, and pace. That is exactly what I want right there. So our first Optimus Prime icon is in. As I was going to say, as hopefully uh, it proves me wrong again, it doesn't really. As I was going to say, is it's, it's, I just I struggle to get uh, like even 190s. And 192 is the current best draft. And I'm, I'm struggling, yeah, to even get 190s. Now, I could take Tony Kroos. Rating, good chem style, doesn't link anywhere. Could take Jorginho, just don't want to use him, if I'm being perfectly honest. So I am going to take Tony Kroos. Nice rating, nice chem style, pretty good all round there. And as our second centre mid, I guess we're kind of forced into taking Fred now, aren't we? Soft links to uh, Vertonghen, soft links to Best. And then our third and final midfielder is going to be Team of the Year, Luka Modric, which is amazing because if we could hit uh, FFS Vinicius Jr., that would be spectacular. Uh, Modric and Kroos in there. We're going to get a good left back here as well. Oh, fantastic. This is now becoming my best ever draft. We're a ways away yet. But with George Best, Hyung Min Son, Modric and Marcelo. Oh, it's going to... Is that another team of the year? Yes! Oh, man, let's go. This is genuinely becoming the most phenomenal draft. If this gives me team of the year, De Gea, I'm just so done. It's not going to. Oh, it did! Let's go! What a draft! Oh my god! We have just, I've, hey, complaining worked for a change. We have just got De Gea, Ramos, Marcelo, Modric, and best, best items. And then in at right back, just a good Prem right back would do. Hector Bellerin's okay. That takes us up to a 92 rated with 90 chemistry. Literally, all we need is the correct left wing to get the chemistry. That is utterly phenomenal. This is going to be a good pick again. I mean, I've got to take Pjanic here. I could take Sané. Soft links to Kroos, which gives him full chem. Gives Song, Sané gives us the chem that we need. And he's only one rating lower. So that takes up to 99 chemistry there, guys. 92 rated. This could genuinely be my 192. And what's great about it is we have two really low rated players on the team that we could improve. What do we get here? Casemir... Oh my god. 93 FFS Del Piero takes us up, guys, to a 193. Oh my god. Oh, please, EA, keep it, keep it coming. Keep it coming. Yes, get rid of the silvers. Let's get them gone. Oh my god. This might well be just the greatest ever draft. I mean, look at this. Look at this draft. My attack, spectacular. You know... My midfield, spectacular. This is phenomenal. Oh my god! What is this? This is, this is just hands down the best draft ever. I can't believe this. Well, I, need a chem, I don't even need chem styles. My team's too good. Uh, we'll take Guerrero for the Hyung Min Sung chem style. So we've got a 97 and an 86 on the bench. And we're already up at a 193. 
That is phenomenal. That is phenomenal. I don't like... Can we get any... I mean, can this become the greatest ever draft? 89 Sommer is really good for that. This is going to be a bad pick. Our first low-end pick. We'll take uh, the Anchor Chem style. Let's get Neymar over here. That's going to take us back up to the 193. I'd be very upset if we don't get at, the, at least a 192 right now. This has got to be it. Come on, hit me with some big cards, man. Hit me with some big cards. We're going to have to take Digne. Digne. Still a 192, although we can pop Sané in. Does that put us back up to the 193? It does. We are on the verge of a 193, guys. We need an... It, like, it would have to be a momentous collapse for this not to be, at the very least, a 192. This is a good card. No, maybe not. Jack, Yarmolenko. Let's take Jack. That takes us back down to a 192. I need three big cards here, EA. Any striker as well we can use. Oh, God. Belanda, still a 192. And we've got two ratings here with Digne. Digne. Give me team of the year Ronaldo, EA. And I, I don't know what, I don't know if I'll be able to contain myself. Obviously, Fred and Bellerin aren't amazing in the team. Even though this is going to be one of the highest rated teams. This is going to be a good card. Amazing. Now, do we take Thierry Henry? Because he's an icon. Imagine if that was Optimus Prime icon Henry. Or do we take Eden Hazard because he's the highest rated? We take Eden Hazard because he's the highest rated. We don't throw this opportunity away. A big card here, guys. A big card here could be the first ever 193 draft. If I get a, like a, just a big card, it's not a big card. That's tough. That's really tough. Um, that's super duper tough. Now, if we put Jack on, don't tell me that... Oh, my God. It's not even... It's not even a 192. How has that failed? Uh, it was just a couple of picks away from a 193. How has this fallen apart so tragically? Oh, that's heartbreaking. That is heartbreaking. There's just nothing we can do to get this up. Even starting Eden Hazard. Sometimes starting players works better for rating. I, 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 it's, hey, this is still my best ever draft, 100%. I mean, look at the team. Forget the rating. Look at the team. De Gea, Ramos, Marcelo, and Modric. Team of the year. Why is Marcelo's card like weird? There you go. Um, Neymar, team of the year. Who's going to come on at striker. And Son is going to drop into centre midfield. The uh, The worst part of the whole team is probably Bellerin and Vertonghen. But this team is spectacular. This, this is without question my best draft ever. Um, I'm just utterly gutted... Who doesn't have Kem? Best Fred and Vertonghen. So a Premier League manager, which of course we don't have. Um, we don't have a Brazilian. We don't have a Northern Irish. We don't have an Italian. We, we, we have... Do we have a Belgian manager? No Belgian. We literally have nothing. No, there's no way to get more Kem. Not that we need more Kem. Um, this is my best ever draft. Without question, without question, I am absolutely stunned that this didn't end up at least a 192. At least. I thought we was itching for a 193. The fact that our, lo our last few picks just cost us dearly. If we, if we even got like an 80, 80 uh, like another 83 or an 84 or something, this would 100% have been a 192. Sadly... We just can't get there. So, uh, Neymar on as a sub for Fred. Neymar up top. Son into centre midfield. And then we've also got Eden Hazard. Now, is Del Piero suited for a centre midfield? I mean, he is. Because he's got great passing, good stamina. His defending's not great. And then George Best the same. Good stamina. Not as good passing, so probably better suited as a centre mid. And then Neymar. Neymar's probably suited as the best centre mid. He's got perfect stamina. Every like great passing, like probably Neymar's better suited as a centre mid. I just don't know if I could justify using him as a centre mid. 
Chung Min Son probably not best suited in, in that CM role. I'll probably keep Tony Kroos in the team until the second half. So the first sub is going to be Neymar for Fred and then Son into the middle of the park. M maybe Del Piero into the middle of the park. What are we saying, man? Five-star weak foot. Yeah, do you know what? Five-star weak foot. Probably Del Piero into the middle of the park. Neymar up on that left-hand side. Uh, Son remains at striker. But five team of the years, two Optimus Prime icons. This might just be the best draft you will ever see. And I know it's not the highest rated draft, and I know it's got a couple of like terrible players, but when we, when we actually click into what we're using here, this, this, this is ultimately what we're going to be playing with. And this might just be the best draft you will ever see, uh, at, the, at the very least until team of the season. Um, so I am delighted with that. I'm blown away by it. And I'm, gen <laughs> I'm genuinely gutted. Um, I'm genuinely gutted that we didn't get the 192. I, I, think, I think it would have been the first ever 192. I'm not entirely sure if somebody's got one before. Uh, I think so though. Uh, but that guys is a draft. Let's get into the action. Okay guys, as we go into the gameplay, we come up against our first opponent with a 4 triple two team. Some nice players in there, but pretty low on chemistry and some bad players in there too. Uh, Barisha at right cam and Unkulu at right CB. Not exactly ideal. Uh, I think it's Sousa at CDM. Yeah, okay, he could sub some players in there, but you know, it's not exactly the most ideal team. We end up uh, getting quite an early goal here. Uh, some good play down the left-hand side with Modric into Del Piero. Back to Modric. Finds George Best. Best shoots a red-timed shot as well. And Best still finds the back of the net. And then that soon became 2-0 a few minutes later. Ball down the right-hand side again. Tony Kroos into Best. Best into Del Piero as a centre mid. As promised, Neymar on on that left wing spot. Neymar didn't get a touch of the ball. Son pops that into the back of the net. And my opponent ends up quitting there after 21 minutes. And, you know, with the draft this good kind of sit there and think man unless i come up against someone incredible i really should be winning this draft or at least get into the final uh sadly for me the next opponent that i came up against had an absolutely bonkers team uh team of the de bruyne makaleli and mateus at cdm messi in a uh, cam and then he subbed out his striker and other cam ramos uh and hernandez special items oblak and uh, obviously the um jimenez special item his team was amazing and you can see here at half time I hadn't had a single shot, but I was dominating the possession. And the reason for this is that I was still on balance and my opponent was on drop back and trying to counter me. And because I stayed on balanced, it was working for him because my three midfielders and my three attackers were quite high. And that left me with four defenders on the halfway line. And it resulted in what I, I saw coming. In my mind, I'm saying to myself, I should change my tactics and also play drop back because this guy's just going to counter me once or twice. You know, I've, I've managed to stave him off with his counters so far, but eventually he's actually going to get through and score one. And if I had to set myself to being drop back and counter-attacking, I never would have conceded that goal because my defenders and my midfielders would have been so deep that he would have never got in behind. And then our second goal, the same again. My defensive line is pushed so far up the field that he goes through again. I miss the tackle and he scores. So although I was able to hold him off until about the 75th minute, he like the odds game was the fact that eventually one of his counters would have p p worked for him and it did and you can see here when even at 2-0 up my man's got nine men of his 10 men just in and around his box and that was my fault for not changing my tactics there I really should have done a little bit better uh, I didn't I left it too little too late but that guy sadly is the end of the gameplay let's get in to the packs all right guys so we end up losing in the second round in this draft my own silly fault really uh, I didn't really do anything with my tactics because in draft, it's generally a bit more of a casual mode. And uh, I should have done. I should have played the same way that everyone plays that you need to win realistically. And, and like I say, in draft, normally it doesn't happen. So I can get away with just playing without tactics. But the guy I came up against in the second round, he was on drop back, one depth, and just on fast counter. And it's just, just really, really overpowered. And it doesn't matter what kind of team you have or how good of a player you are you're really going to struggle to break down somebody that's doing that. And my problem is, isn't that drop back exists because it does exist in real life. My problem is the fact that as an attacking option, playing with no defenders, sorry, with no attackers is far, far too viable for a full 90 minute period. And what I mean by that is, is I was on balance the whole game. As I say, I didn't really change any tactics. In fact, I didn't change any tactics until my opponent went 1-0 up. Then I went in and, and played uh, constant pressure and high press to try and get back into the game because he was dropped back. 
And that was my own fault for this reason. And this is going to be a little bit of an explanation. So call it an excuse if you want. I, I take full responsibility for losing the game because of the, the tactical mistakes that I made. But I want to explain kind of in a bit more detail why it's broken. So the issue is, is let's take my team, for example. If I play on drop back and have my four defenders and my three midfielders on the edge of my box, and then I control one of my attacking three players to bring down, like to come down as well, I now have eight players back and only two players forward. Yet when I attack, I have multiple players going forward, specifically the three attackers and probably some of the midfielders are like rushing up. And in FIFA, after 70 or 80 minutes... If you play that way, your George Best or your Del Piero are still going to have insane stamina to the point where they could just burn past your defenders. In real life, when you watch players play, when you watch teams play drop back, one of the issues they have is that over time, over the course of the game, they get less and less uh, attacking options because their players that are constantly running up to try and attack that are then sprinting back to try and defend are dead. And sure, they make subs on those players. But you can only make three subs. So when you're attacking with two, three, or four players, uh, you know, the, the, the issue becomes that your players just get too tired the later the game goes to score goals. In FIFA, that doesn't happen. Your players are still fresh enough to continually attack as if it was the first minute. And that's a huge problem. And so I wouldn't mind if one depth was in the game and this whole defensive tactic was in the game. Because what I would do then is I would just try and maintain and manage the game for the first 45, maybe 60 minutes knowing that the later and later the game goes at us being nil-nil or whatever the score may be, I know the later and later the game goes, the less chance this guy's ever going to have to actually counter me properly because when he wins possession or when his AI wins possession, they're not actually going to be able to break because they're just dead. They don't have any stamina. They have no legs left because they've been running themselves ragless for the whole game. And in that case then I would just play as passive as I could for the, for you know 60 minutes and then I would be able to go really hard into attacking because I know I'd be relatively safe the problem with it now is is if you don't match someone with drop back when they're playing drop back if you keep your attack you know your back line pushed up even a little bit if you're not good enough at the game to read the plays and intercept the passes which I genuinely am not I also rely quite heavily on my team to do a lot of the work for me um if you're not good enough to anticipate and read, you're just going to get balls, one-twos, in behind. Chip through balls, long balls, cross balls, just constantly in behind for the the attack. And that's exactly how my opponent scored. Both of his goals came from counter-attacks, from me having possession, losing it, and not being on drop back. And that's why I think EA need to not necessarily remove drop back. They need to change the rate with which the stamina is depleted on a, on players that are running up and down and up and down and up and down. And then secondly, they need to influence more how badly tired players become. Because when you're tired, I don't know if you guys have ever played football in real life or whatever, but when, you, when you've like burnt yourself out, when you're out of stamina, you, like, the ball feels heavy to even kick. You feel heavy trying to run, like you just feel heavy. And I do understand the concept of these are professional footballers. They're not your Sunday league guys or playing at a local park or anything. But even as professional footballers, there's a reason why normally the teams that play drop back counter and and just on low depth in real life are way inferior teams to the team that they're playing is because what they hope is that they hope within that first 40 60 70 minutes to be able to nick a goal before they get to the point where they're too tired and then if they can nick a goal then it's just all men, all men behind the the line trying to not concede for the rest of the game and sometimes it works but more often than not it doesn't and there have also been some teams that play uh, super defensive football to to win and they've been successful with it but the reason why they've been successful with it is because they're not necessarily always behind the ball all the time eight men in the box and I think that's where FIFA have got it wrong you know if, if you play against a formation specifically the 4-2-3-1 what happens is is the four defenders are there the two CDMs are there and two cams are there as well. So you have eight men along the, like four men, like six men pretty much in the box, two men on the edge of the box, and then one human control player that comes back as well. And it leaves one player up front. And that's just not, like, if, if you ever see a team play with one player up front, you know what they usually do when they get the ball? They punt it up to that player and hope that he can win the ball and hold up the possession. But more often than not, he can't because there are even just two defenders on him, two centre-backs just controlling him, 
And if he manages to win the ball, then the rest of your team should then be, okay, we've got a problem. Let's sprint back. Let's try and control this uh, counter-attack that they're going to have. But more often than not, the defenders will recover the possession quite comfortably. And then the offensive team will again just pin you in, hold you down and, and create chances. But in FIFA, the counters are so potent and the 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 balance is so strong on allowing one depth ultra defensive counter attack to be so strong that it creates this boring style of fifa to the point where even with this team forget about whether i lost with a great team or won with a great team or whatever but even with a team this good i just don't want to play the game i i don't want like halfway through that game i, I was considering quitting because i just wasn't enjoying myself at nil nil at half time i was sitting there saying to myself like you know, if I wasn't a content creator and if this wasn't a draft and this game wasn't actually important in spite of the fact that I le lost it, I was sitting there saying if I wasn't all of these things, I probably would have just quit the game and moved on to another game because I don't want to play a game where the balance creates a scenario where the gameplay is incredibly boring to play. Uh, I want to play a game where you're rewarded for attacking aggressive possession. That, that, and that's my opinion. That might not be your opinion and you might like this patch and you might like this style of FIFA, right? But for me personally, I preferred the FIFAs across the years where lots of goals were scored, where skill moves were viable, where the game was enjoyable and free-flowing, even if it meant that games finished 7-3 or 5-4. I much prefer that than games finishing like 1-0s and 2-0s or 2-1s because everyone's just so scared to concede or not even scared to concede. Everyone knows that by defending so heavily and counter-attacking, it's the most efficient way to score. And so what that results in is it results in two people playing anti-FIFA and basically seeing who can create the goal scoring opportunity first and that's not something that I genuinely I just don't enjoy that and as I say that's not necessarily like the gameplay itself like in terms of input delay or passing or shooting or anything like that there are a few small problems here or there specifically with overpowered AI defending and the lack of reward in human tackling and human controlled defending but I actually think the gameplay itself is quite fun it's just the tactic and, and the abuse of the tactic that needs balancing and EA sadly don't balance the game very well or enough. Every other game out there, okay, they're not yearly cycles and that is one of the biggest issues, but every other game out there, when they have a balancing issue, they will balance the game as quick as possible. Fortnite do it regularly. Um, League of Legends do it regularly. Dota does it regularly. These games, when there's something that becomes apparently overpowered, they make changes as quick as possible to balance that so that all options are viable. Uh, FIFA, they don't. And, and I'm pretty certain that this is going to be the way the game is until FIFA 20 now because uh, to my knowledge, there are there's one patch that came out today that fixed a few minor bugs. Um, but I don't think there's any gameplay patches going forwards, which means this is it for FIFA for us now. We are going to have people play this super anti-defensive style of football um, until somebody can figure out a counter to it. And I'm going to try to figure out a counter to it by potentially using five backs or three back formations and to overload the attack so heavy that I just dominate in control but there's going to take some it's going to take some testing um so sadly guys although this was my literally the best draft you will see if the best draft i've ever drafted even with the two low-end players in there this is a just an absolutely phenomenal sensational draft sadly i lost in the second round and i got two nil rage quit with the first guy because the the difference and, and this is where I, I thought draft was like a fun more casual game mode the difference with the first guy is he he wasn't on drop back he wasn't like, you know, countering me. He didn't have his players on stay back while attacking. He wasn't playing that defensive style. So it was a free flowing game. And my skill was the difference. I was more skilled than him. I was able to take my chances better and create goals and score. The second guy, he was playing drop back. And even at half time when I knew he was, I still didn't change my tactics. And I should have then married up with him. I should have gone drop back and countered him because that way I would have had my team of the year defenders, my team of the year midfielders sitting deep there. And I would have had prime best and prime Del Piero and team of the year Neymar as my attackers. And I probably, I'm not saying I would have won the game, but I would have had a better chance of winning the game. Uh, sadly, I just 
carried on playing on balanced and on balanced on balanced. It cost me at 1-0. I then went aggressive because I knew I had to. I knew this guy was already on drop back. I knew I had to go aggressive to try and get back into the game. He actually stole the ball off me from kickoff and, and immediately scored a second goal straight away. And then I pressed again for the last like 15 minutes. I managed to get one super late on. It was too little too late and we end up losing the game. So that's where we're at, guys. Uh, I do appreciate the support on the video. Uh, I am interested to see your guys' opinions on what we're talking about here. You know, not everyone will agree with me. Some people will say, here he goes again, complaining, yada, yada, yada. And although this is a complaint, I think this is a viable complaint. I don't think this is me complaining for the sake of complaining. And I, and I don't necessarily even think it's me complaining because I lost. Um, I, I, I've, I, quit game, I quit a game actually this weekend league whilst I was drawing because I wasn't enjoying it and I stopped playing because I'm not enjoying. So I don't necessarily think it's, you know, this is a case of, oh, I'm losing, so I'm complaining. I think this is a case of, I'm not enjoying the game and here's why. And so if it does come across as a complaint, I apologize. If it comes across as just like super negative, I genuinely apologize. You know, I want to bring you guys enjoyable, fun content. I'm just finding that very difficult right now outside of the menus on FIFA. When we get into the actual game, it's just such a... Just such a, an incredibly negative experience that I want to play it as little as possible and get the most out of the content as possible. Um, but yeah, I, I'd be interested to see your guys' opinions. Um, obviously, we're not going to make our money back here. We, we'll get close, though, with the amount of players that we've got and such. But this is going to be the end of the video, guys. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.